Yo, what is up guys? Still Boy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So this video is a quick little recap of the top rank card which went down yesterday. Of course this was headlined by Jose Ramirez versus Jose Pedraza. Jose Ramirez of course coming off that defeat to Josh Taylor last year and I'll say this credit to Jose Ramirez for not coming back against a soft touch he fought a legitimate top 10 contender in Pedraza in his comeback and that's what I like to see we know Ramirez is a world-class fighter so why waste time coming back and fighting a tune-up no jump right back in there with a top contender and that's exactly what he did so credit to Ramirez in regards to the actual fight itself, I have to say, I saw the ESPN feed for this fight, and I felt this fight was a lot closer than they were making out, and I felt the 116-112 scorecards were a bit harsh on Jose Pedraza. Of course, Ramirez won this fight by a unanimous decision. I have to confess, I wasn't scoring this fight round by round, but just based on the eye, there were so many rounds in this fight that were very close, um, both guys were competitive throughout, and to me it just looked like a very close fight. I will say, if anybody won this fight, if anybody deserved it, it probably was Ramirez. But to me, looking at it on face value, it looked very close, and a few people I really respect had this fight a draw. Um, for example, Chris Andre, I believe he had this fight a draw. So, uh, yeah, I felt it was a close fight. Really enjoyable fight. The fight really delivered, in my opinion. I was looking forward to this one when it got announced. It was a fight of two contrasting styles. You had the relentlessness and pressure from Ramirez, that robust uh, style that he brings to the table. He's very strong. He's very big. He's a workhorse. And, you know, he always, he always does his best to try and make it a fight. Whereas Jose Pedraza, a languid, loose... Beautiful boxer to watch at times, really skilled, he's got a beautiful lead hand, underrated counterpuncher, really good at picking his openings, and, and he throws some nice flashy combinations here and there. You know, Pedraza is one of those guys who, to me at least, when he's in full flow, he's beautiful to watch. His style, there's something very aesthetically pleasing about his style when he's on form. And he was on form in this fight. He gave Ramirez all he could handle uh, in this bout. There were moments in this fight when he really took advantage of Jose Ramirez attacking in straight lines. One thing about Ramirez, yes, his pressure is relentless and it's physically imposing. But in regards to the, to the technique of Ramirez's pressure game, uh, he's not exactly great at cutting the ring off from a technical point of view. Doesn't really take a step to either side. Uh, his routes to get to the inside is pretty one-dimensional. He likes to throw that long jab and then he'll step in behind it. And yeah, Pedraza was taking advantage of that at times. Any, any time there was distance in this fight, usually it was Pedraza who was picking Ramirez off with that jab, uh, walking, him into, it, walking him into straight punches. And he was landing the odd shoe shine combination here and there as well, uh, just point scoring kind of thing. Um, but Ramirez on the flip side, he had his moments uh, where he got Pedraza against the ropes and when he did that it was Ramirez who was getting the better of the exchanges he was landing the heavier shots uh, in particular with that left hand to body and head to me this was one of those fights that was super close it was super well matched the style matchup made it very interesting and I really enjoyed this fight quite frankly Ramirez got the unanimous decision uh, again I felt the scorecards were a little too wide uh, maybe a majority decision, maybe a draw scorecard, and a couple of 115-113s would have been more fair. But again, I felt if anybody won this fight, it was Ramirez. Um, Ramirez definitely needs to improve on certain things. He's still a top fighter, no doubt about it. He's a top, top three guy in that weight class. But I'd like to see him improve his ways on how he applies pressure, how he gets to the inside, because, like I said... He, he tends to follow guys in straight lines and to get to the inside he, he'll use that long jab where he'll step in behind. I think Ramirez would greatly, it would greatly benefit Ramirez's game if he were to implement shifting into his pressure game. Because apart from that jab, Ramirez can't really throw 
off that front foot while they're moving forwards. So I think, you know, look at shifting. I, I would try to try to work on that if I was Ramirez. Look at, look at guys like Golovkin, for example, Roman Gonzalez. Look at how these guys punch on the, on the front foot and apply pressure at the same time while moving forwards. I'd be looking at guys like that if I was Ramirez to try and take my game to the next level. Um, but yeah, I mean, he lives to fight another day. 140 right now is open. It looks like Josh Taylor's going to vacate and go to 147, which would mean the belts are up in the air. I've, I've been hearing talks that Ramirez and Zapeda are both highly ranked in the WBC. Maybe they could get that rematch for a vacant title. I mean, listen, you can't have too much of a good thing, and their first fight was really good, so I'd like to see Ramirez fight Zapeda again. That's a great fight, but there's a whole host of other options out there at 140 for Ramirez. I'd love to see Ramirez fight Progray, for example, or Subriel Matias, even Jack Catterall, of course. So there's a lot of fights out there for, um, uh, for Ramirez. And as for Pedraza, yeah, he lost this fight, but to me, his standing doesn't really change. He's a top 10 contender in the weight class, and I would like to see him fight fellow contenders, uh, to be honest. Just because he lost this fight, he's still a player. I tell you what, I think one beautiful boxing match would be Jose Pedraza versus Sandor Martin, who recently beat Mikey Garcia. I think that would be a great fight. Of course, top rank also have Arnold Barboza Jr. I think that would be a great fight for Jose Pedraza. So, you know, Pedraza... There's still some good fights out there for him. I wouldn't get too down on him. To me, he's still where he was before this fight. A top 10 contender. A really talented boxer with a beautiful style. I still want to see Pedraza back in action as soon as possible. So yeah, big up to Pedraza as well. Really good fighter. And obviously credit to Jose Ramirez for getting the job done. And again, he could have easily come back. Uh, you know, after that Taylor loss, he could have easily come back. And fought a scrub. But no, he fought, he fought a top contender. And I like to see that. So credit to both guys. Put on a really good show. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But Ramirez was the winner. Also on the undercard. You had a few noteworthy fights. Uh, Joey Gonzalez at featherweight. Defeated uh, J.O. Santisma. Uh, by a ninth round stoppage. I felt the stoppage was bullshit to be honest. Uh, I, felt, uh, I felt the referee was a bit too premature. In regards to that stoppage. I know Santisma took a lot of punishment, but, you know, it's, it's a fight at the end of the day. I felt he could have let it continue. But Joey Gonzalez looked pretty good in stages. Obviously, right now, Gonzalez has that tag of being a bit of a gatekeeper. He was comprehensively outboxed by Shakur Stevenson. He was beaten up by Emmanuel Navalete. He's not going to be one of those guys who challenges for top guys in a weight class, but he could be involved in some fun fights. If I was matching Joey Gonzalez, I, I would have him fight uh, maybe Isaac Dogbe next. I think that would be a great fight for an undercard. You also had the return of Gabriel Flores Jr. Obviously, in his last fight, he took an absolute shellacking against uh, Luis Alberto Lopez. I, I mean, that fight could have been stopped, and he took a lot of punishment in that fight. Gabe Flores, only 21 years old. Um, he's got a fun style, he's got a lot of athleticism, some quick hands, some nice combinations, but he fights in a manner in which isn't conducive of his, phys of his physical attributes. So he'll, he'll, he'll step in the pocket for too long, he'll hold his feet too long, and he'll trade with guys, but he's not a big puncher. Um, to me, you know, Flores needs to be making the most of his long-range boxing and try to box off the back foot and make the most of his attributes, but right now he's not doing that. Uh, he beat Abraham Montoya by a majority decision. I felt he did win the fight, but he needs to make a lot of improvements. You actually had a, a heavyweight debut on the undercard. Richard Torres, the super heavyweight Olymp uh, Olympic silver medalist at Tokyo 2021. He won his pro debut, second round knockout over Alan Melson. Fun fight for what it was, it was quite crazy. Um... A lot of wild moments, wild exchanges, there's a bit of blood as well. Uh, uh, Richard Torres, a southpaw, not the biggest heavyweight in the world, he's about six foot two. Uh, aggressive dude, likes to fight out of that crouch behind that jab, pouring with his lead hand, trying to close the distance and work. Um, 
he was willing to exchange with Alan uh, Nelson, where he dropped him in the first round, actually sustained a cut in the first round, uh, Torres, due to a head clash, pretty bad cut, a lot of blood, but he dealt with it fine, and in the second round he scored the stoppage uh, with his left hand. Uh, he actually dropped him twice in the second round as well. So, yeah, I mean, Richard Torres, I, I quite like his feet. He's very quick at closing the distance. He's got quick feet, uh, pretty quick hands, seems to have decent power, very young. So it'll be interesting to see how they match him. He is a small heavyweight, like I said. Maybe they're going to go down to bridge weight, who knows. But Richard Torres is definitely a fun fighter. He's got a fun style. And again, if this kid can fight, he's going to be a star because he's got a unique look, he's got a fun style, he's got that Hispanic backing as well, that Hispanic heritage. So if if Richard Torres can fight, he's going to be a big star. Also on the undercard, and this is the last undercard fight I'll mention, you also had Mexican-American heavyweight Antonio Morales, who is six foot seven, and, you know, a, a big dude, carries power, did a pretty good job of maintaining range against his opponent, and he scored a second round knockout over Brandon Hughes. A pretty one-sided fight. Uh, Morales still pretty young for a heavyweight, 24 years old. He's six foot seven, 85 inch reach. Seems to carry power. He is a little slow, but you know it's good to see uh, these heavyweight prospects come up. And um, again, maybe in the future, you could have a fight between Antonio Morales and Richard Torres Jr. That would be a great fight. So yeah, I'd, I'd keep an eye out for um, Antonio Morales. He looks quite interesting, actually. So we'll see where he goes. But yeah, I mean, I enjoyed this card, actually. A really good main event. A couple of interesting things on the undercard. But yeah, share your thoughts below. What did you make of it all? Peace.